Cassidy. And I'm Chris Hassan. And today we'll be showing you UTA Lab 441. But before we start the lab, we need to make sure that we have our goggles, our hair up if you're a lady, gloves, aprons, and our shoes that cover the entire foot. Uh, before you start the lab and start gathering your materials, it's a good idea to turn on your hot plate to about one or two because some hot plates take a while to heat up and you need to start heating your turf beetle alcohol as soon as possible. Be careful not to turn them above two because if the turf beetle alcohol gets above 30 degrees Celsius, the vapors can be irritating like the lab manual says. The materials you will need for this experiment are turf beetle alcohol, which can be found in the fume hood. When gathering the turf beetle alcohol, it's important to dry off the container before pouring it into the graduated cylinder because any water droplets that drop into the graduated cylinder will cause impurities. The graduated cylinder you will need is a 50 milliliter, you will also need an unknown, which will be given to you by your TA for part C. A 250 milliliter beaker, which will be used to heat up the turf butyl alcohol in between runs. A hot plate. A test tube. A test tube stopper. Copper wire to stir. A thermometer. And a 400 milliliter beaker with an ice bath. And a stop. It is important to weigh the graduated cylinder with the terpetal alcohol first, and then pour out the terpetal alcohol into your test tube, and then re-weigh the graduated cylinder that it was initially in. This is very important. If you weigh the graduated cylinder before, and then try and subtract that from the graduated cylinder plus terpetal alcohol, you will be wrong in your calculations, because as the terpetal alcohol cools from being exposed to the air, it will stick to the sides. So weighing it after will help to reduce the when weight When setting air. up the experiment, it is important to get a piece of copper wire that is long enough to reach the bottom of the test tube that you will be using. Since you want the solution to freeze uniformly, if the copper wire does not reach the bottom of the solution, the outside will freeze faster than the inside and will give you an inaccurate freezing point. Also, make sure you have a stopper that fits your test tube. You want the stopper to be secured in the test tube because it will make it easier to record temperatures and also stir because you will not have to hold the thermometer in place and end up locking the temperature readings for your partner. This will also stop you from being too rough with your thermometer. Since you have partners in this lab, we advise that one partner stirs the solution and calls out the temperatures while the other partner calls out the times and records the temperatures. It's very important to record the initial temperature for every run. And we suggest that you keep the initial temperature of around the same degree, so that way you can tell if you have any wacky results, and so that way you can redo the run if you need to. Also, it's important to write on your lab notebook when the solution turns into a thick slush, which we'll show in just a little bit, so that way it'll help on your graphs for your post lab. After all this, you're finally ready to begin the experiment. After you lower the solution into the ice bath, it is crucial that you begin stirring immediately and recording the temperatures at the given time intervals. This part of the video has been sped up to ensure that you do not try and base your temperatures and times off of ours. Depending on the initial temperature of your solution and the temperature of your ice bath, the freezing point can occur at different times. That is why we advised you earlier that you should probably keep your initial temperatures about the same. That way, if one of your freezing points appears off, you can redo one of your runs while you're in the lab. Also, be sure not to stir as fast as this part of the video depicts. If you stir this fast, you risk breaking your thermometer. However, we are aware that accidents happen. Remember, if you do break one of your thermometers, make sure that you let your TA know as soon as possible. That way, he or she can clean it up before anyone gets hurt. And this is what your thick slush solution should look like. The procedure for parts B and C is the same as part A. However, for part B we use water and part C we use the unknown. Be sure to completely dry up the test tube between parts B and C because any water left over will act as a solute which will give you completely messed up results. Also, another way to get low results could be that not all of the turf butyl alcohol was liquefied and some could have crystallized due to cooling down. Finally, we would like to remind you to dispose of the waste in the non-halogenated waste container. I'm Alexa. And I'm Crystal. Hope we helped. Good luck. <laughs> 